come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, the one that comes at you every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, because we're on a quest for total world domination, which you can help us out with by going over to wherever you found us and hitting that like or subscribe button. These are the Internet Radio Superstars. Michaela. Holly. Sean. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watch the movie that was chosen by Colin. Colin. <laughs> Collins we gotta talk. a safe place. <laughs> <laughs> but for how much longer? No. Uh, <laughs> uh, Keep it Colin, on. what did we watch tonight? Uh, tonight we watched another movie in my series uh, where basically I think we're just trying to move the sales of black gloves, right? We're trying to bring yeah. those back into the Colin public. Colin has uh, stock through, in black gloves. Through sheer gloves. force of will. <laughs> you say we. Yeah. Okay. Colin has stock in black gloves. Black glove menu. Yep, 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 yep. Collins black gloves. You can use them for all sorts of things. Okay, so we're not going to finish. I see that, that infomercial. Uh, uh, we watch. Colin has isotoners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Were those isotoners? Those are like, are they motorcycle gloves? Well, that's just the only brand I can think of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know they're football gloves because yeah. of. Um, Dan Marino and Ace Ventura. Yeah. Yeah. Isotoners. Okay. <laughs> so clearly the interest is waning if it was ever there in Jalo Shots. Yes, that's right. We went mm-hmm. back to the well, well one I, more time. I feel like I've been shot. For <laughs> another Italian Jalo movie. Oh. This one was called The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward. <laughs> From the year. <laughs> Ward Hu. Yeah, well, why? There is an unnecessary H on the end. Oh, yeah. is there an H? Yes, I didn't there notice. Is. Yeah. Wow. W-A-R-D-H. Yeah. Ward Hu. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Cool. There is a reason, but you're yeah. going to have to. I know what it oh, is, God, but one is. of our listeners wrote in, so we'll save that for a mailbag. Right. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, from the year 1971. 71. From peak giallo, uh, giallo time. Mm-hmm. Peak mm-hmm. giallo time. Yeah. What was our, it was like, it was it uh, yeah. the is this 70, like 71, 72? Or, like, like the, ours was the 80, 81, 82? Is yeah, because that- ours being the slasher movies, <laughs> and if this is your first rodeo, right, I did the, the whole <laughs> enterprise here has been basically like linking the American slasher movie and comparing and contrasting mm. to the mm. Italian mm. giallo movie. We learned that the, mm. the Americans um, don't have time to waste. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. this fucking thing done and that everybody else is just kind of like let's let's groove for a little bit let's let's go on yeah. this journey well it's a 10 let's years earlier, right? drug yeah. and yeah. shit. earlier decade i was like um, i mean american movie in the 70s also, also took their well, sweet yes. ass time yeah. yes yeah. Yeah. but just let's comparatively <laughs> and they were different decades and whatnot but yes yeah. yes um this one is from sergio martino mm. uh, how do we know sergio martino sergio martino also directed torso there torso. it is yeah. torso there it also is a movie Covered that we did really uh, here? Yep. Earlier. Yeah. Yep. Um, I think uh, written, written by, written by. Written by. Oh, 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 oh. there's another there's a very, my favorite writer yeah, a very <laughs> important fact right here written by I mean Ernesto Gastaldi he was Ernesto, one of the Ernesto. Ernesto. Yeah. Ernesto hello Ernesto. sir Sean's Thank you for not. Uh, may he me. reign and live long and prosper yeah, forever and ever, <laughs> and may he continue to write things. Just if, right you're, if you're just joining us, go back and listen to the Torso episode where Sean was, was certain he was dead. <laughs> yeah, but, but before he was certain he was dead, he was criticizing his writing yeah. ability and then doubled down on it because I said, "Don't you know? Yeah. Let's not have another." Um, I was very sure. Larry, Larry, Larry Block. Larry Block. Larry Block. Larry Block. Block. We have heard yeah. nothing from Ernesto, so no, we're, yeah. we're good on that front. Alive, Although so the hit may just take a while to get from wherever he is to here. <laughs> yeah. he is and so I'm eyeballing all of you because who Some knows? Some hitman's in a rowboat occur- going across the I ocean. Think that's right how now I now see it. He's just like got a scroll. With my, yeah. He's got my picture, and that's it. Yeah. He's coming to it's America been, to find me. Your picture's been hand drawn. Yeah. It's stunningly accurate. I mean, the only thing he's got to go on. But now you've seen two Ernesto Gastaldi movies. If you were criticizing mm-hmm. his writing in in Torso, which is a movie that I liked, I yeah. can't remember. Did, you were criticizing. Did we like I think we all liked Torso, didn't we? <laughs> didn't we I all did. liked yeah, Torso. We liked Torso. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. All right. So scenes. we'll we'll find out what Sean thought of Ernesto's contribution to the uh, the genre. Here. Wonderful wanna, man. What if I just want to come on everybody else's contribution <laughs> and just leave Ernesto out of this and say, "Good job, man." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't we don't involve Ernesto. Uh, it's an entirely pot. We can, yeah, we can do that. Um, we just say we love him and uh, we move on. 
Well, this one, um, uh, so the last one was, what have you done, what have you done to Solange? We were talking what about that? the, uh, that was 72. That I felt say. more dated than this. Right? It did. There's a modern, it did. Yeah, this, because I think that's why, you know, Sergio Martino kind of has, I think next to Dario Argento, Sergio Martino is the Jallo guy. Actually, I think that Sergio Martino's Jallos feel more like Jallos. Mm-hmm. Dario Argento. I mean, now that you've seen enough mm-hmm. of these movies, like his movies are different. They're like yeah, the they same genre, yeah. but they're different, and that's why he's Dario Argento. Martino more right. than Bava. Um, I think so because Bava, Bava basically started it. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, he kind of made the language of the Jallo movie. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, with a girl who knew too much, mm-hmm. um, the the segment, the telephone from Black Sabbath yeah, and that, yeah. Blood and Black Lace, mm-hmm. which we also did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but those were like uh, 60s, right? Mm-hmm. But Bob is working at this time. In fact, uh, the star of this movie, Edwige Fennec, is in Five Dolls for an August Moon the year before, which is... Uh, what is that? I'm sorry. That title, <laughs> that's Mario I like, literally Bob. Wait, uh, I had a physical so are, reaction. Are the dolls that. women? Wait, yeah. Dolls yeah. Women that are, okay. Five Dolls of an August Moon? Of the August, yeah. Okay. Of the an August, August Moon. It sounds okay. like, a, like a sweet witch movie. It does. Yeah. It, it, does. Like, really it really does. does. But that was Bob. So Bava is doing Jallo movies yeah. in the 70s. Did Bay of Blood, he also did. Did off into directions like that, where there were witches? involved and shit other elements ever make it make their way into well you'd movie. have to i mean that would be so um they get supernatural yeah if yeah. they get well that's suspiria uh, oh, you know because yeah, yeah. oh, suspiria yeah. uses like the film language of the giallo but it's a supernatural horror movie exactly yes. you know? i think that's the best way to describe I think that's it that's why i like it so much yeah yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah. looks like it yeah it looks yeah. like a cross between like a mario bava movie and a slasher movie it's right. got witches mm-hmm. and you know but mm-hmm. it, it has black loved killers yeah, wandering checks around all those it. great boxes yes. yeah yeah and i think that's you know because it's one of the most popular mm-hmm. people always associate it with giallo and that's kind of maybe their entry point into italian yes. horror yeah. movies that's know. like oh that seems to be most people's entry point and oh, like it's the most accessible thing yeah. out there i would say yeah but mm-hmm. yeah if, if by sheer name alone if yeah else. yeah i remember when suspiria came back into the public consciousness because it had been you know I mean, it kind of came and went, right, Mm -hmm. back in the 70s, and then it was existed on video, and then um, I want to say it was Anchor Bay Entertainment put out like this, like they made a big deal out of their, like, you know, mastered from 2K Source, and, you know, Mm -hmm. like, uh, they're like double, or I think it was like a three CD or three DVD edition of Suspiria, and that was back when, you know, before streaming services, like if you wanted to see these things, you bought them. There was a lot of uh, ads for that in film magazines and stuff like that. So you just buy blind buy these movies because you were like, I've seen everything. And now there's this like vein of Italian horror and people bought Suspiria and they hated it. It was I mean, that was the response. It was like, what is this movie that everybody makes such a big deal about? And then they really did not. I mean, it did not go over well in that wave. You know, now you hear people still talking about it like they like right. it. But I'm like, I remember <laughs> when the masses were exposed to it, horror fans, and they did not like suspiria mm. and that was like so what the 2000s or whatever mm. when that dvd yeah um blitz happened um and obviously dvd was kind of what brought jallo back because then there was like the you know euro crime euro sleaze the ja- then eventually they started using the name jallo because they're like oh this is what the italians called it so we're calling it jallo now but it really feels like americans got wind of the word jallo with the rise of DVD mm-hmm. in the 2000s. Mm-hmm. Before that, it just would have been a yeah. a mystery, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. or an Italian, a European mystery uh, movie. A whodunit. Um, so, Edvige Fennec. Edvige. Uh, that's the reason that I brought tonight's movie, because uh. I was like, okay, so we've done all these Jalo movies, and... I keep talking about her on every single uh, episode that we've ever done. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, well, we got to do something that represents like her run in the genre. So tonight's the Edvige Fennec and George Hilton uh, movie, because the two of them were in a bunch of them. Most of those were with uh, Sergio Martino. They did like maybe three, I think together with them, but they're together in all the colors of the dark, 
which is a great uh, yep. title for a horror movie. Mm-hmm. That is a great title. Um, that's Sergio Martino. They're together in The Case of the Bloody Iris, a.k.a. What Are the Strange Drops of Blood Doing on Jennifer's Body? <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Which I like a lot. I wow. love when Giallo titles are a very specific question. You know, yeah. like I love when what have you done to Solange? Solange? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I love a specific. Where question Where did we title. land on our Giallo title? Did we ever? Come I don't think up? we officially came we to one. Yeah. Death walks on the radio waves or something like that. I can't remember. You got to go back. I think yeah. it was a torso episode, or was we, it what, was it torso? We were working on our Giallo. I think it comes I mean, up every one now yeah. since so often. Yeah. Um, yeah, we didn't really come. We, no, we, we need we need to no, work on it. It was radio and it was sounds and it was yeah. there's got to be a color in there. Yeah, it was like the red sounds of the ra- it, we got to work on. Yeah. it. Yeah. Well, so at Vige Fennec, the red. If I'm saying her name uh, mm. correctly, right? See, we're, 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 we're we're getting there. We're always close. We're getting there. Well, she's this uh, um, very beautiful actress of Italian movies that was in a bunch of like sex comedies and then eventually uh, went into giallo movies. Um, she was married to, uh, the guy who produced a lot of her sex comedies was Sergio Martino's brother. So Mm -hmm. she's, uh, at the time that this was made his Mm -hmm. (laughs) sister-in-law. And so he made like a whole series of movies, uh, kind of weird to put your sister-in-law in a movie. Yeah. Yeah. She's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Would you be naked in my movie? Yeah. Yeah. Lots of naked throughout most of my movies. Yes. (laughs) That's also part of the appeal of the Edvige Fennec, uh, (laughs) you know, like, uh, filmography. It's like she's naked in a lot of the movies that she's in for a lot of the running time. Yeah. But I think, you know, it's like it's weird when you, you know, because it's like it's exploitive, but it's also like she has actual acting to do. And I actually think that the, in this movie, she has like one of her best uh, performances. I know the dubbing. I thought she was pretty you, good. Yeah. yeah, I was I was surprised with because I. I did like a giallo drawing recently and I just like was Googling like giallo movie girl to like pull up, you know, mm-hmm. images for reference. And hers was always the first one. So I used her face as a reference because when I think of like a giallo woman, that's what I think of her yeah. face, yeah. like totally. and her yeah. face, a hundred percent, just like her style and her makeup and mm-hmm. her hair. And like, she's got a very angular and unique looking face. I don't know. I, I, like I, like I dig a, her. She's a very soft face. Yeah. 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 Like a classic Hollywood kind yeah. of look to her. Yeah. yeah. But, and, almost, and then and this, she had like the, the twiggy eye makeup. Yeah. Yeah. Did, yeah. yeah. It almost feels like they, um, used her look for the love witch yeah yeah, yeah absolutely yeah, i was right. thinking that too yeah yeah well, who did yeah. you say she looked like when we were watching holly like across oh across between up. natalie wood and audrey Hepburn. yes exactly that's exactly yeah. it yep yes I yeah fan. yeah i mean she uh she definitely makes an impression um she is in oh the, uh, the other one uh your uh, vice is a locked room and only i have the key uh, which is no. a Sergio Martino movie, but George Hilton isn't in that one. Okay, but yeah. so but there's no relation. It's like, not story wise. No, no. Okay. no. Even though the title shows up, like because it's Ernesto yeah. Gost- Gastaldi right. wrote it, gotcha. and he came up with the title in every, this it movie. Would be funny if every card he sent was just more titles. For <laughs> yeah, Jello. it's like he came up with the Jello movie title <laughs> in this movie script. I'm well, it's like it's that. like Pixar movies. They always have like a little right. like they an always Easter egg of the next the one. Easter egg of the next yes, movie. Yep. Yeah, Ernesto. Yeah. yeah, I know. Yeah, he Who cranked knew? him out. I mean, I know <laughs> Ernesto Gostali, we were I think we were talking about on Torso, we're at like a bunch of uh, Giallo movies. I mean, a lot Love of them, them are the, super, them the Sergio <laughs> Martino movies. Um, he can do no wrong. <laughs> and then, so George Hilton is the other of like the Giallo power couple. Like yep. if you see a Giallo, mm-hmm. you're going to see like one of these two usually in them. Uh, mm-hmm. And he... So who is he in this movie? Um, he is George George. Um, he's this. He's actually top built. He's uh, he was a bigger star at that point than she was. Um, she, he was in a bunch of spaghetti westerns. So that's right. You put a hat on him. He's yep, got that face. Yeah, he's, got he's that, definitely that got that face. Yep, in Italian crime movies, he was Sartana. Okay, so if I say Sartana, do you like have any reference for Sartana? No. I okay. feel like I've. I feel like there's been a Quentin Tarantino reference yes. to Sartana. Yep, there has yes. been. Yeah. I'm like, I know this. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> obviously there was the you know Italians had their uh, the man with no name was uh, yeah. right the Clint Eastwood in the uh, the Sergio Leone movies, but then they had Django, and yes. so. Like those Django movies, I don't know how many there are. There's like twenty to fifty Django movies. I mean, like different people playing them, and it's just the name. Mm-hmm. You know, here's yeah, the guy. Yeah, because every time they come up, I'm like, have I heard that title before? Is there yeah, another one? And yeah, like, kill Django, one. kill. Yeah, or, you yeah, know, like yeah. I mean, it's yeah. a, <laughs> Django comes to town, and then so then there was Sartana, uh, <laughs> who was the other one? And I think there's another one called Trinity. 
And those are like the three, like, you know, anti-heroes of Italian uh, spaghetti westerns. But there's a bunch of Sartana movies. And League of Van Cleef plays him right. in one that I, Return of Sartana, which I watched. And uh, I think George Hilton played him in one. There is one called uh, Django and Sartana are coming to town. Uh, <laughs> Django versus Sartana or something. I mean, like, there's a series <laughs> of movies. Like universe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was like, this is like Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it yeah. is like, uh, but it's always different guys playing huh. them. But I mean, that was like, a, you know, this kind of mini industry of... Uh, the Italian uh, uh, film film world back in the day before television came along oh, and yeah. destroyed it all. Mm. But um, really, really, television is the death knell of everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Says the man who works in television. <laughs> and have yeah, for a long yeah. time. I was like, you yeah. are damning yourself on <laughs> every episode. <laughs> I really am, aren't I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> take it back. Take it back. And they know where you work yeah, and who your yeah. employers are and who your boss is. My boss is, is damn. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I love TV and I'm looking for a job. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the other guy who is familiar to anybody who watches these movies, you've seen Ivan Rasimov, uh, and he was the uh, Jean in this movie, but he's been in a lot of them. Uh, for some reason, I always imagine him with blue contacts because that's how he looked in All the Colors of the Dark, but mm -hmm. he ended up doing a lot of like... Like if he he went he was more in like Italian cannibal movies uh, as time went on. So like he went into like you would see him in the horror stuff where Edwidge Fennec and George Hilton you really wouldn't. Um, oh, and uh, Eli Roth actually the last time you saw Edwidge Fennec was Hostel Part Two. She was oh. the art teacher in uh, Hostel oh. Part Two. He, huh. he brought her back. I think in that. I always like when they bring him back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we got the strange vice of Mrs. Ward. The first time I ever Truly heard about strange. this movie was uh, Edgar Wright uh, talked about it. Really? That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Because he was saying like when he was younger, that was his introduction to Jalo. And I'm like, oh, this is interesting because the way it played in England, it was a bigger deal yeah. than it was uh, here. Yeah. Um. So then I was like, well, I got to check this movie out. And so there you go. Bam. It became available, you know, eventually. And so. Interesting. I was like, all right, this is a, 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 well, I thought a decent mystery. We'll find out if you guys can correct. Well, so Last Night in Soho really is his like love letter to this time period yeah. of horror movies, huh? Yeah. 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 But I like that he's not like ripping it off. It's right. Not, he's doing his own thing. Yeah, yeah. Not like a Tarantino movie where there's riffs from <laughs> specific movies. Right. You know, it's yeah. A, yeah. like a love it's a, letter to It's his to own the time. story, but I, I guess more like style and visual language mm -hmm. and, you know, the look and feel. Mm-hmm. A companion piece to perhaps Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It's like two filmmakers doing the same yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. You know, no, that's actually a really great. Um, that's a really great comparison. Th that, would, that would be that would be a great a double feature. Yeah, yeah. And I heard Rick Dalton died this week. I did, oh. I saw oh. that. Yeah, yeah. So there's yeah, a eulogy, I and that. I think uh, Tarantino's doing a podcast on the films of Rick Dalton. Mm. Apparently, wrote about. Okay, anyway, back to the. <laughs> uh, all right, so we got the strange vice of Mrs. Ward. What's the strange vice of Mrs. Ward? <laughs> blood. <laughs> she is equally turned on and repulsed by blood. Mm. That is a strange vice to have. Yeah, it sure is, strange. Colin. How do we find out about this strange vice that Mrs. Who is well, first in, of all, who in is her Mrs. horny Ward? flashbacks. Yeah. <laughs> who is Mrs. Ward and how do we find out about her strange vice? Uh <sighs> Yeah, go back to the beginning of this movie, which yeah. seems days ago. <laughs> it, it, it does seem like a long time ago. How did this How start? How did this movie start? <laughs> she, okay, she, she, mind. she's a prostitutes on a street. Oh, I that's that. right. Yeah, right. Prostitutes that were very well dressed. Yes, they're Italian. Italian, yeah. Yep. Go Italy, they're probably love wearing it. Versace, Versace and yeah. yeah, style in the clothing and the architecture. That's what you're getting mm -hmm. out of Jalo movies. Although mm -hmm. this one takes place in Venice. Uh, yeah. So, or no, no, it's Vienna. Sorry, Vienna. It's Vienna, Austria. With the sausage. Um, she yeah, did, someone she literally did. says, "I was afraid I'd miss out on my bratwurst." <laughs> <laughs> so, which same, same, a same, a hundred percent. I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna, Ern, I'm gonna make a super niche meme out of that. Yeah. Ernesto, I'm, I feel seen. Thank I'm you. Gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna take that screenshot and I'm gonna say that feeling when you miss out on Kiwana's brat days. Ah. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Very niche, specific, local meme that will only be funny. How I feel on bringing your brat to work. Yep, yeah, yeah. I, I just, have that. That's brilliant. You don't have. You, I can't. Bring your brat to work day? No. I had this. Oh, yeah. What? It was a bring your brat to work day. Oh, man, uh, we, that's at, fantastic. At uh, my old news station, mm. every every time. We tried to, we were going to do a, 
a, a promo for it where they bring a real bratty kid in instead of oh, a broad. This is kind of the creative minds we're working with here. One of the one of my first thoughts when I started working from home was like, oh, I can go to Kiwanis Brat Taste for my lunch. Yeah. Like that was like, I, like that was like, oh my yeah. god, I can go get a give me one that's been lunch. in the beer yeah. for hours. Hell yeah. Well, is that like the part of like whenever these movies do, uh, you know, like uh, when that was a broad detour? Yeah, but I mean, but yeah, but, I'll always take a broad detour. But they do that yeah. in Suspiria with it because they do that in uh, in Germany, right? So yeah, like yeah. there's a stop uh, the over at of, the of uh, worst the Rathskeller or whatever they mm-hmm. got the beer hall Not and all worst. that. You got to yeah mm-hmm. with the weird German uh, dancing and the leader hosen. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> you got to do that. You showcase yeah, the city yeah. that oh, you're in and the, right. the local cuisine. I literally just grilled out brats yesterday. Yeah. yeah. And I, it's summertime. I was, I was sitting outside having a fire and I went back in to get something and my cat was on my counter eating a brat. Yeah. And I was like, no, not my good brats. <laughs> So I, I understand the sentiment. Yeah. I yeah. missed out on yeah, a good brat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> my cat ate it. <laughs> well, I will tell you, I'll remind and you. And that is that, uh, Holly's strange vice. There you go. <laughs> strange vice. Cats and brats. Yeah, Holly. Um, no. Uh, Julie Ward is a diplomat's wife. Yes. Okay. Right. Recently arrived in Vienna. Mm-hmm. And uh, she comes with the, because uh, he's the ambassador, I think. He's, he's, he's always one of the these corny politicians doing weird stuff I was going like to say, this. that extracts. You know, I was like, that, that actually explains yeah. why she gets around so much. Yeah. It, it makes sense. She's a politician's yeah. wife. It yeah, this sense. is what all these freaks do, man. That's why they're always getting yeah. busted with blackmail images and stuff like this. this she, makes a lot if this more took sense. place like, 20 years later, it'd be like, look at these pictures I got of her fucking with glass on her chest. You yeah. Know? This would be blackmail. What? Because, she fucks with glass yeah, on her chest? Oh my God. Uh, this yeah, was a particularly horny flashback. was something. Yeah. It yeah. was. First of all, he like it's very shadowy. This movie has a lot of yeah. weird shadowy and this flashbacks. This is the first one. No, the first one is like a rape scene, and it's like Jesus yeah, Christ, he slaps he's like the slapping shit out of the, the shit out of her. Yeah, and yeah. Which like, remember, guys, I told you, Giallo movies are Stephen King who likes to slap women around more. Right now, Giallo is leading the leading right. charge. Yeah, right now. Really yeah there's is. a very yeah. strong streak of misogyny in the mm-hmm. well. I mean, I don't know if I'd go so far to say in Italian culture, but definitely in their art, you know, and right, spe- right. specifically in Giallo movies, mm-hmm. uh, there's a uh, there's a sense of machismo, I think, and a lot of it because I mean, like a lot of the characters in this are kind of motivated by like, you know, how we have to respond to uh, either protecting Julie Ward or pursuing Julie Ward mm-hmm. in ways that now you would read as like. You know that's uh, off, off, out of bounds. I'm right? going to take you away from here. <laughs> yeah. We should go to Spain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah, just you're gonna, taking me nowhere. Yeah, I'm going to take you on a bike ride. And you're going to love it. You know, she's like, no, take me home. And like, but I'm taking you on a bike ride first. You know, and then it turns out she loves it. And yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Just like the scene where we think she's getting raped. No, it's no. The, it's a rape fantasy. It's a fantasy. It's, yeah. She's into it. Yep. Yeah, and they fuck you? in the mud. And it's raining. That looks real. Yeah, uh, okay. It was very uncomfortable, but then I was like, oh, she actually likes it. And I felt a little better. <laughs> yeah. I, when I found out it was like a role play yeah. game thing, I was like, okay, that's kind of a relief, honestly. Yeah, me like, too. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I really hate this. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay, never mind. Yeah. I still hate it, but, but she's she sacri- okay with it. She sacrificed <laughs> that sweater for that role play. She was right? committed. Because that <laughs> sweater got ripped down sweater. the and, uh, yeah. How do you yes. explain this stuff when you go home? But I guess she, like the guy's <laughs> never around. Her husband. Oh, no, no, well, no. This was what before. Okay. The, so, the, like, the this is during is, the two years beforehand. Yeah, and the thing is, like, her husband seems to know. Like, they all seem to know. Everyone's yeah. like, "Yeah, that's a horny freak politician's yeah. wife lady." Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, this is my wife. I love her, but she fucks did, around. Did you, guys, yeah. did you guys hear about her strange vice? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, I she fucks all these guys, but they all know. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't get the impression that the so. What I think, yeah, though I guess the way I read it is that she had a two year affair, yeah, with uh, with Jean, Jean. right, Ivan Rasimov, right? right, and he's like this abusive, controlling weirdo, but she's getting something there that she can't get anywhere yeah. else, right? Yeah. They have like a like a. S and M situation that she's into and also hates. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. exactly it. Because I think yeah. later he says like, you know, she's like, I hate you, and he's like, well, hate is stronger than love, and you know, I, mm-hmm. I don't want to be, you know, I want you to feel yeah. something very. I do st- agree with his statement on indifference, though. Mm. Yeah. What did he say? He he was like, I hate indifference. I'd rather you feel, and I was like, you know what? 
I I support that. Yeah. I hate indifference. I understand where he's coming from. But it'd be better probably on the love side than this. Like, I mean, this every, is a, a everyone would prefer illness. the love side, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. But indifference is bullshit. Um. So we're treated to. So I. So yeah. So for two years she was with this guy. Mm-hmm. Then she broke it off, and then she got married to like the safe guy, yeah. the mm-hmm. diplomat, right? Thinking that this will somehow cure her of her uh, uh, mm-hmm. attraction and repulsion. It's very Wuthering Heights. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so she's with the diplo- diplomat, but mm-hmm. she's she's triggered at the very beginning because we're also told, I mean, this is, I guess, the setup to what's going on in the movie. There is a murder that you said of a prostitute mm-hmm. at the very beginning by mm-hmm. a black gloved killer in a mm-hmm. car. And so it's like, okay, we got the, we got the, the, the knife wielding black, black glove killer on the loose, the sex maniac at loose in the city. And I think the cabbie that's taken her from the airport says something about, I hope all these, like they should bring back the death penalty and, and, you know, put all these perverts to death. And that mm-hmm. triggers her flashback. So she's thinking that she is a pervert. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that I was why it. she had yeah. the flashback. That's like the shame she has. In it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Which, I mean, it doesn't, I feel like it didn't translate as well when you're watching it. It's looking back, it translates. It's funny when you think about it, but I wish they would have played that better. Yeah. So but it came I, across but some of this like mystery, you're supposed to unravel it like a little bit. Of, but I suppose, yeah, you'd have to actually think back yeah. to the whole movie to be like, oh, this is what, you know, yeah. it's actually, it's not giving it to you like right away. Um, she then so, I can't it's remember that classic Jalo tactic where they give you everything in like two seconds. At yeah, the end. Exactly. you don't, you yeah. don't, nothing yeah. makes sense, and all of a sudden it's like that. Yeah, there it is. Exactly. They just word vomited out yeah. on you. Yeah, and it's like, oh god, oh, okay. Yeah, there yeah. were the because uh, I think that's that's something that it sh- the 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 genre shares with the slasher movie. You mm-hmm. usually have that exposition dump at the very mm-hmm. end that explains. It's yep. like, it's from Scooby-Doo, oh, mm-hmm. right? I it mean, is from the, Scooby-Doo, it really absolutely. Kill us unmasked and it's like... Mm-hmm. Yeah, dead. well, no, it's, it's from Agatha Christie, but I mean, yeah, you know, or, or Edgar Wallace, I suppose, yeah. but yeah, I mean, Scooby-Doo is probably the most popularized version <laughs> right. of this. It's like, who knows what the fuck's going on, but at the end, there'll be a scene... Agatha Christie is like <laughs> rolling her grave. Right. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Scooby-Doo? <laughs> Um, I can't remember what uh, anticipated the flashback to the weirdo sex scene. I think it was oh, yeah, which one's the weirdo? Uh, the, the, they were all the pretty glass in the bottle. Yeah. Oh, um, I don't remember what triggered that either. What was it? She, I think, what it was was so she arrives in Vienna with her husband. She's like, okay, I put all this behind me, and we're gonna go to a party. And they go to a party held by a friend of theirs. Oh yeah, right? this party looked like a blast, man. This party was a good time. I mean, everybody's having a fun time in the swinging sixties. Wasn't it a somebody's funeral? Like somebody had died. That's why they were having the party. <laughs> That's what, what really? the party was for, wasn't it? Because Shut I think up. that was part of the, the dialogue. Was there, like, She's naked like wrestling. <laughs> well, I mean, they, yeah, were, yeah, they were in drugs. party clothes. Uh, they were not in like yeah, morning. They were clothes. like dancing. It was. Like, I don't think they know anything party. else. Yeah. I think this is just how they what? live at this. Okay, moment. so maybe I'm incorrect, but I thought that I the really party need to research was my Italian roots because she was invited right. The, the the diplomat and his wife are invited by, uh, I don't remember her name, Carol, right? Carol, yeah. Carol. And Carol... Has a cousin. Right, but Carol right. has become, because the uncle has died, she's become... Uh, right, and, an uh, heiress. Yes, yeah. it's all of a sudden uh, she's rich and wealthy. So it's her uncle's funeral. Yeah, I think so. I think they're wow. celebrating. It's like they're, you know. And, she's like, well, I'm Carol, rich now, party. Yeah, uh, yeah, Carol doesn't seem like the most caring person in the world, so she I can doesn't. imagine that yeah. she would throw this party. She's very crass, very harsh. Yeah. Yeah. And at this party, as you said, women are tearing their top. It was strange because yeah. one guy tore a woman's yeah, blouse she's wearing, open. Yeah, because she's yeah. wearing a dress that's made from like a NASA blanket. <laughs> Basically, like, yeah. Exactly. It's like a NASA tin blanket. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just they both like, like I bet it rips. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it is made of paper. I bet you're not wearing underwear. It rips dress off. And she's like, well, now I'm mad, so I'm going to rip your dress off. Yeah, and what? This made no sense. None like, whatsoever. <laughs> and then everybody's not, not laughing. The, it's you like, know what? Not the entire world makes sense. <laughs> Sometimes it's fine. <laughs> it's like, this is great party entertainment, according to all the people who are there. Going. It yeah. really does. So they long. really don't it's give like, up. It turns into like mud wrestling in the middle of the living room without the mud, obviously. Right. It's. I think that's that's the drugs. 
because you just keep going. Yeah. So I mean, you would I, have to be intoxicated at this point. Otherwise, it would be a terrifying party. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes I wonder if like there was maybe, I mean, because there's, there's always, I notice there's talk of drugs. Like so-and-so mm-hmm. was on drugs or he's, a you know, like in Blood and Black Lace, right? You never really see no. drug use, you but don't. there's people who are on drugs. And then it's like, okay, it's the 70s. And obviously, you know, we're in that era of, yeah. you know. And I wonder if they're playing to an audience that just would have assumed that, like, all these people are high on something. And that's Probably. why there's mm-hmm. a naked fight in the middle of the party that everybody thinks is great. <laughs> I mean, would it, would it you kill you to show someone, like, just pretending to snort something? Right. I need right. a little more to understand why this is so batshit crazy. Yeah. Yeah, because that stuff doesn't uh, come in until later, 70s. it feels like, right? The later 70s when you actually start seeing people snorting drugs or shooting mm. drugs or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't question. there. Like, I don't know. That... So. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Trying to, I'm trying to think back on my uh, uh, what you call it the the porn movie by Paul Thomas Anderson, Boogie Nights. Boogie Nights. Oh yeah, yeah. that was my... late '70s. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm thinking. If that, yeah, but that, that movie's made porn. later. Right, they wouldn't have in the '70s. I don't know if they actually. You got to go back and find the movie that first showed somebody shooting Doing up. Drugs. I'm sure y'all got to just Google it. Anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, Somehow at the party, it turns out that Jean is here and he is mm-hmm. like, hello, I'm back and I'm ready to. Hello, I'm Jean. He's, yeah, yeah. He's just giving like eyes across the room. Yeah. yeah. Cause he knows, he knows the effect he'll have on her by showing up and being there. Well, she has yeah. to leave the, the, the party. And I think that may be when she has this, uh, confrontation with him. No. Well, yeah. But before that, she has the flashback. Okay. Right, I think probably yeah. Right after she sees goes. him, and, and so then we what, get the bottle one. Yeah, what is this? Uh, She's flashback? naked on a bed. Yeah, yeah, in a very dark void room. Mm-hmm. So there's just one light. Mm-hmm. He's got a bottle and he smashes it on a chair. Well, first he's like pouring it out. Yeah, he right, pours, pours it all. Yeah, it's he, like it's like champagne, and he pours yeah. it on her and yes. pours it all over. And she's enjoying that. And then he smashes in on a chair and the the glass, like, the glass showers onto her. Falls all over her. It rains down on her. It yeah. really These, does. like glory shots of it yeah. Yeah. coming down on her. Yeah. And then uh then he they cuts have her. He cuts her. With oh yeah. Yeah, he, he cuts, cuts open her, her he cuts open her negligee. I was worried that was going somewhere else. Yeah, me too. I was like because yeah, like he went down with it and I was like, yeah. Oh god. Because yeah. no, he cuts no, her no. negligee, but it also like cuts her skin on the way. Luckily there's only blood involved. Yeah, uh, but then they they start having sex and their bodies and the friction of the glass and everything. They make a together. glass sandwich, yeah. Cutting, Basically, cutting up their bodies with glass yeah. pieces. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Which I have to say once again, this is not something that most women like. Yeah, I just want to put that out there. <laughs> Yes. I would nobody, hope not. Nobody take okay. cues from this movie. It's not a good reference. Yeah, but and what this I guess, vice is very particular to Mrs. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I was getting off it, of, you know, not getting off. Wow. Uh, <laughs> oh, Jesus what Carlin. I got from it. There we you had go. a Freud, Freudian slip. We, Freudian slip. Oh, yeah. We had a Freud quote at the beginning. Of yeah. There was. No, yeah, the movie sense. starts with a quote <laughs> from Freud. Um, <laughs> Tell us how you really. Feel. What I took from it was that <laughs> you know because right. I was sitting there and I'm like. This woman, like, whatever it takes to actually satisfy this lady is, like, off the charts. And I think that also kind of positions, like, who her lovers are, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's like, can they come anywhere close to, like, this guy from her past, you know? And and as I was thinking this, I'm like, these are thoughts I don't think at any fucking modern movie. I don't know when the last time was I was actually going, like... Huh, this is like the inner psychosexual lives of these characters right. and trying to, you know, it's like you just don't have this anymore. This is like an adult movie, mm-hmm. you know, made for adults to actually try and figure out the psychology of these characters and who eventually is the psycho, the actual psycho in the midst. The sex mm-hmm. maniac. They're all sex yeah. maniacs. Who are we talking about? She meets another guy. Yeah, I was like, I feel like it's like a mama bear, papa bear, baby bear situation. And she's like, she's Quah. had the most extreme. Yep. She's had like the middleman, and she's had like the least extreme. This was too hot. This was just right. <laughs> yeah. Well, who is the middleman? George. In the- okay, who's just right. Yeah, George is. The- George is just right. Yeah. And who is he? This is played by George Hilton, but who is his character? Uh, who is he? He's, yeah. we, we ass- he's the we cousin assume- of uh, uh, Carol. Yeah, mm-hmm. cousin of Carol. So he's yeah. another heir. But we also think he races motorcycles, maybe. It, it's either he races he, motorcycles yeah. or she was very horny. And that's the only <laughs> options we have. Because he's like 
pr- he's like pretty dangerous where he like right. takes her on like a Vespa ride and he's like going it's real fast. It's a motorcycle. Fast. And that's it's all right, motorcycle. whatever. <laughs> like Sean, as you pointed out, this stuff looks like perfume ads and cigarette it's, it's commercials. It's so perfect. Sure. Like, it's yeah. shot that way. He's got like the, the good the looking shades and on and the good yeah. hair and he's puts a cigarette in and yeah. just like put yeah. a fucking brand name up to the think left like of a, them and that's think it. like Roman Holiday but sexy yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, there's those, all those shots of them yeah. like driving through the hills that yes. you know it just almost made, uh, clipping cars several times yeah, yeah. but it, it made me think about um, uh, Austin Powers when they're driving through and it's and he's like you know the great thing about London it looks exactly nothing like Southern yeah. California <laughs> <laughs> they're driving through it's the only thing I could think of but it is those shots they're in a little a little sports car driving through yeah. the hills yeah, yeah. it's fun so it does it, important for her Horny is yeah. later. It does scene. remind yeah. me of that perfume ad with Kira Knightley where she like hops on the back yeah. of the bike. And, yeah. It's very much like that. Yeah. That's what that's what Italian filmmaking has come down to. Just those little ads <laughs> for for uh perfume and yeah, cars. It's <laughs> like, I mean, that's where style comes from. It feels like is like, you know, uh, from Italian uh like they crafted it, right? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. the fashion we see the interiors of this apartment that she has, which mm-hmm. I, like I always just kind of am, am in awe of these. This is part of the appeal of the giallo yeah. genre is like the fashion, the women, the architecture. Yeah. Everything yeah. is, is very, just like, what the fuck? Everything in this is very mid-century modern and mm-hmm. it's very bright space and, age. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I love it. It's great. Yeah, <laughs> love you, you it. Have Her apartment's mixture, something. It's like oh, it you have is. a mixture between like space age, but also mm-hmm. like the ruin of uh, you know right. of Vienna. Yeah, or it's like they're like they're combining and hitting each other. We have the old, mm-hmm. we have the new, yeah. the styles. There's an often dialogue talking about like, well, he's a modern guy, you know, or he's a modern this. But it the what they're implying seems to be like well everybody sleeps with everybody now and, yeah you know it's like nobody says I love you anymore and that's an outdated concept and yeah. you know this is 1971 <laughs> they uh, gave up already damn <laughs> they yeah. already give it up and um, also Italians <laughs> yeah <laughs> right I mean I don't know. I mean, easily disposable. Yes. They're they're little they're a little looser with the monogamy rules. <laughs> it yeah. feels that way. It's like well you were his mistress and blah blah blah. So the the so I guess. Uh, George is like I woo women in front of their husbands. That's yes. my specialty. Yeah. He's a very like and I said at the time, and you guys agreed. I guess uh, David Copperfield energy, right? That he, yeah, did. Oh, right, that he's going on yeah. here. He's like, watch as I make your wife disappear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he, tra- he does like what is he, he acts like it's a magic trick, but it's not. Like he yeah. he carves his, a G into an apple and gives it to her and says like, now every time you take a bite, you'll think of me or something. That's like that. That's really up close uh, quarter magic. It, that. Yeah. <laughs> That's that energy. I mean, yeah, it, he, he presented it like he just pulled off a really amazing right? trick. Right. And he it's just like, carved okay. his Which, because we only cut back to it. We didn't see the, the three yeah. minutes he was there slicing into it. Yeah. I did like her response though. She's like, I've already devoured you. <laughs> I was like, ooh. <laughs> but this, this now kicks I'm going to eat your fucking apple. They do this, this flirt, flirt back and forth. It's very much like they're trying to one up each other. And he clearly would lose on whose lines anyway because he runs out of ideas so quickly and says oh hello indigestion (laughs) (laughs) you're getting the buzzer for that but but he's like oh hello indigestion yes (laughs) he's trying a little bit well you just boner killed this whole thing dude thanks for bringing up diarrhea Mm. that's exactly what I wanted to think about there's a few lines and then she's like what what was another good one that you remember I mean just uh, I think it mostly happens when we're we're, we're going from scene to scene transition we're Right, that was one. I don't even know what they said. It's just the. the oh, that was great. But the one where he was like, "No, I can't do that." Goodbye, and it's just like, hung up. No, her, yeah. the psychiatrist. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. The, the doctor. Well, the doctor finally calling. calls the doctor. Yeah. He's like, "Well, not yeah. during visiting hours. I yeah. can't come out today." Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. And the guy's like, "But well, you have to come see her right now." <laughs> no, I won't do that. Slowly Goodbye. putting the phone down. <laughs> I'm going to start doing that at work. Yeah. No, I can't do that. Goodbye. Yes. This is the witticism of Ernesto Gastelli (laughs) coming through right here. This genius. The true uh, genius. uh, Mm -hmm. Showing off right here. Master Um, of words. (laughs) And I guess. You are all going too far. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I guess I also did think that uh, Sergio Martino's uh, photography was like. Like better than. I mean, it's not as flashy as like a Dario Argento. Movie, right. yeah, there'd yeah be a but lot there were some there. shots that surprised yeah. me. The rain, was... the rain scene, I thought was very good. It the rain pretty. looked good because it really it's pretty. in a slow mo and it's lit well, and yeah. it's just it's like you can see each like fat drop of rain hitting and splatter yeah. and yeah. big old fat rain, big old fat rain. <laughs> they get. Uh... I liked how that taxidermy room looked when 
and like the way they shot it in the dark too. Mm-hmm. I thought that was effective. Mm-hmm. So. The parking garage scene. I yeah, was, yes. It was it was shot very, very nice. Very deep throat. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he catches uh, at Vige at all her best angles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Throughout yeah. The entire movie. Um, okay, so so then you know it's like right, now we have a love triangle, right? Uh, mm-hmm. The 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 diplomat husband is you know I think jealous of mm-hmm. uh, you know it's like she knows that he knows that there's this guy. Uh, Jean in the past, mm-hmm. you know. I think and we got a rhombus point. again. Yeah. No, he, shit. Oh, oh shit! Oh shit! We got we got her, George, Jean, and the husband. Yeah. Yeah. So that's oh my four. god! Oh my god! It is a love rhombus. <laughs> it's a love rhombus. Love rhombus. <laughs> She's come full circle. That I feel like we need that? like a bell or yeah, something. Yeah. yeah. I feel like balloons and confetti. Yeah. yeah. Ceiling or something. This is yeah. this is like the equivalent of like a goddamn golden buzzer. Right. Yes. <laughs> Confetti at least. Love rhombus, Hit it yes. again. We have a T-shirt. That you yes, can get we on do. We do. Team Public. Rhombus yes, we have a Love Rhombus T-shirt. And it, Sean, Rhombus is accurate because I, I think, as you said when you originally coined it, was like some people are closer, other people are farther away. Right. Yeah. yeah that, you know? It's like, the distance <laughs> that yeah, makes yeah. it a Rhombus. Yes. yes, yes. yes. Yeah. That's what yeah. uh, creates the shape. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> It is well, not a square. It is not even. No, it's no, not. No, not even. No. 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 Well, who's one of them away here? In and out. Yeah. 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 Nuts. And some people think it's a square, but they don't realize they're yeah. the corner on the rhombus. You know. Like, yeah. Well, I guess it, it, the 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 love rhombus then kind of gives us this interesting dynamic of like which one of these guys is going to win the affection of uh you know the heart of Mrs. Ward through their Julie weird Ward. methods. Yeah, because yes. yeah. you got the guy who is like you know he can give her he can please her sexually in ways that like no other person can. Which like okay, she really needs to consider that though if this is important to her because you're not going to be able to find people willing to right. Right. to make a glass sandwich with you. Right. All. The time, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah like, but she recognizes that this is like a negative thing, and you know, you hates can't herself have your for it. Eat it too. <laughs> so then she's like, "Then you got the safe guy," but it always felt like he had to. He was trying, like trying to assert himself in some ways. In her, you know, it's like I'm going to fight off uh, the guy. I'm going to punch him, yeah. and the guy just laughs at him and walks away. Mm-hmm. Um, you have like there at some point he's like I'm going to take care of this once and for all he gets his gun and we're going to go over to his house it's very tiny gonna, two bullet gun yeah we're, we're going to teach him once and for all um, and then there's George who's like uh, he's got the magnetic you know thing come away with me just come away with me and we will leave all of this and you have a yep. brand new life you know somewhere else it's as easy as that um, but there's this killer uh, stalking through the movie and mm-hmm. killing people. We we're told that he kills prostitutes. However, um, there is a, a and she's getting um, roses. Yes, delivered with notes. Yes. With yeah, like poetic notes. <laughs> yeah, and vaguely fr- threatening. Mm-hmm. Yes, no, yeah. always very threatening. Very threatening. Pretty threatening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mostly threatening. <laughs> yeah, that was where the, your vice is a locked room and yeah. only I have the key. And, yes. you know, the best part of you is always belongs it, to me. Or something. Was it the best or the worst? It was the worst part of you. The worst part of you is the best thing that you have. And it belongs, and it belongs, to, belongs me. to me. Yeah. 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 So we're like, that one I felt was like particularly like disturbing. It's like, yeah. 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 It's like, who's sending these things? And we're like, well, it's John, right? John is sending these flowers to her. Um, and I mean, he admits and he's, it. Yeah, he's admitted that he's the one sending them. Yeah, because she starts going like, "Well, there's, oh, well, I guess she really gets into the 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 murder thing becomes personal because Carol, mm. um, she gets a phone call from the killer, yes, who basically says, "I saw you having sex with George. I want shillings. You're, you're a diplomat's <laughs> wife, and so I'm going to tell him all about it. It's blackmail. Meet yeah. me at this place, which is, I think, like the." Uh, um, palace, maybe is it a parliament or whatever of uh, Vienna yeah. or Austria, mm-hmm. right? Uh, the, very scenic, you know, that yeah. they go to uh, where she's going to meet. But Carol's like, I'll go meet him, you know. It's very he, like mini Versailles vibes. It's yeah. very beautiful, wherever it is. If if it's John, I'm going to tell him off. But she goes there and she's killed by the knife wielding uh, murder. The murder scenes in this, um, not slasher ish. You know, I, 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 I mean, there's a lot of slashing. Vibe. I was like, he's literally slashing. Okay, he's literally <laughs> so much slashing. <laughs> there isn't an accent on the. It's a straight razor, of course. Yeah, but it's just and kind it's just... of. I don't know. I guess there's no ex. Uh, there's no accent on finality in them. I guess is one way to say it. Like it's it's. 
I, I get what you're trying to say, but I also don't know how to say it. Um, it's like slash, 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 dead. Yeah, but the yeah. other ones are like murder set pieces that we would later come to, you know, like Argento would do and like Tom Savini and that right. kind of thing where there's like the setup and the gore. Yeah. I guess you're not really getting that. So it's like, you know, it's not, that's not the focus of the movie. Mm-hmm. It's not trying to be like, uh, we're actually seeing the knife cutting through, right. you know, flesh yeah. or whatever. That would become the hallmark of the slasher movie. Right. Mm-hmm. That's not really pre- present no. here. And mm-hmm. it's like, it doesn't really feel like a slasher movie because it doesn't feel like it's a not body count focus. movie. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. And at some points, like, you forget about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a Hitchcock movie. I guess right, that's what's going yeah. back to like that mystery thriller kind of thing. There's a killer on the loose, and we know he's in her circle somehow, mm-hmm. but who is it? And basically, you have three suspects, right? right. It's one of these three guys, you figure. Um, and then uh, she is, so now that Carol is dead, she's like, well, it's 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 John. John's the, the, the psycho, and right. he's probably the one who's doing it. So we must mm-hmm. confront him. I'm going to bring him into the police station. He's like, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, you're crazy. You know, it's not me. You no, but a- this was also the most like, I can't, I couldn't believe this. He was talking this way in front of a cop. It's just like, you seem like if you haven't killed this, these people that you have killed someone, yeah. you seem like a sex it, maniac, he, no matter what, whether you're responsible for this. He, he's literally like, oh, you think I slash their white throats? Like, it's yeah. very like, <laughs> he's, he's very, it's like, my God, yeah. yes, yeah. I do now. Yeah. He has no problem with <laughs> right. it. He's yeah. He's, Cause uh, I think when you're in an interrogation like that, you're trying to give the impression to the cop that like you are like, right. it's not me, man. Yeah, I yeah. Don't possibly do this. Yeah. And he's pretty much like, yeah, I could have done it. I could have done it, but you got yeah. nothing on me, and like you're crazy. And like, of course, I send her flowers. She's married now, so that's how I get to her. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah right. And right, it right. could be her because she has this blood fetish and revealing her mm-hmm. uh, vice to the police. Yeah, yes. you know, there was that scene uh, where Carol was. Uh, they were cross cutting between Carol at the, um, we'll uh, say the park. mini Versailles Park, mm-hmm. and uh, Julie's watching. The motorcycle, the motorcycle. Getting horny. Mm-hmm. I thought Getting that horny. was, yeah, I thought that was insightful. Yeah. Uh, he came up, it was like, oh, this it is really good. was, because we're yeah. like, what the fuck is happening right now? Yeah. And Sean's like, well, <laughs> what's Sean, happening? Sean somehow completely understood yeah. this scene on a level we did not. Yeah. Like, well, earlier she had gone on that thrilling motorcycle ride. <laughs> yeah. With- with uh, George? George, George, yeah, and so my thought was just like uh, maybe even she doesn't know it, but psychologically she's watching motorcycle races. We figured either she's watching George do this, yeah. or she's just watching motorcycle yeah, races. We're all like, wait, horny. is George a motorcycle driver? Yeah, we yeah. Know, yeah. 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 don't know why she'd be watching him, but maybe she's like, oh, she misses yeah. that wild ride. That thrill, she yes. Yeah. So, she, so she's watching motorcycle races to get a little bit of that back. Yeah, but yeah. then she's like, like, oh, my cigarette. friends in danger. I can't. I can't. Right. Yeah. I can't think about my horniness right now. Click. It's done. And that went over all of our heads except for Sean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's what happened, it, yeah. right? That's yeah. why she's turning it off. I'll go uh, with Because that's why they made such a focus on that because I, I, there was that one shot where it was like the actual movie was at the motorcycle race and it yeah. cuts to like she's watching it on TV. Right. right. That's the thing that was like weird in yeah, the film yeah, language. Exactly. It was like, why did we actually get the shot yeah, there? You don't, you don't yeah. cut yeah. there until someone in the movie's there. Right. right. Like that's, yeah. exactly. that's movie that law, weird. right? Yeah. 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 But movie I'm like, when, when she said that, I'm like, that's what it means. That's why they yeah. did it that way is to convey that idea. So congratulations. Oh, thank you. Um, I'll get, I get one every now and then. Yeah. yeah. Well done. So Carol <laughs> is murdered, and then uh, I think uh, then they go to confront, and that's when uh, the which the like diplomat, yeah okay who goes in like a forty foot hedge maze when there's a serial killer gonna meet meet you up to pay off a ransom? I know like, it's like super. I'm dangerous. sorry, she deserved this. That's not like, a smart move. <laughs> it wasn't a smart move. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and she knew it wasn't. She even said like, yeah, it could happen. Like that was her attitude, and it's like, okay, but what if it does? Okay. What are you gonna do yeah. about it? Yeah, because she apparently had no backup plan. Rich girls no. think they're no. invincible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yep. So she's killed, and then um, I think uh, 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 that was when Julie and her husband, right, the diplomat, there whose name I him. can't remember for uh, the life of me. Mm-mm. Anyway, that's when he's gonna. We're gonna go confront John in his big house where he has uh, these photographs of nude women that he's apparently taken in taxidermy with a, a menagerie yeah. of live animals, and live animals, yeah, oh, <laughs> bats and, and reptiles, bats. Um, and we have to go sneaking through there in the dark, and they find him dead in the bathtub. Mm-hmm. And we're and like, sneak around for like a really literally long ten time. minutes. Yes. Yeah. It's a real long time. 
Yes. And it's the, like, okay. The dripping of the bathtub yes. lures their in. And that's going to become in. a thing later. Mm-hmm. It's going to play, play in her psychology because she's going to be reminded of this. Like, oh, no, mm-hmm. Jean yeah. is yeah. dead, but the, the blood, you know, maybe mm-hmm. attracts her, repulses her. Um, so he's out of the equation. We're like, okay, so who This is then? why she keeps fainting, by the way. I don't know if we talked about this. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because she's Either... equally repulsed and turned on. She just right. faints because she can't handle it. <laughs> Which I understand. Sure. Sure. Happens to me all the time. And women, women fainted more in the seventies, it seems like, than they do now. And you had to have smelling salts or some yeah. kind of smell. Probably the strong heat. smelling <laughs> liquor. Yeah, um, less air conditioning. Yep. Yeah, like less this, air conditioning. Have you heard all that polyester? Yeah, oh my all God. that wool. There was lots yeah. of wool back then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So after her husband has gone and dealt with the, uh, you know, taking her along to go deal with Jean, mm-hmm. then she comes home and she's like, George. Get me out of here. He's like, I'll take you to Spain. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so away they go, and the movie goes to Spain. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then uh, another strange thing happens. Uh, we see the killer uh, cost a woman who's like a fl- flight she's attendant. Like a, uh, yeah. yeah. And he attacks her. And I was like, I'm like, this he is, is and out he's of- revealed. Yeah, they show his face, and I'm like, well, okay, we're, was, we're doing something here. I was really here. confused. I thought I yeah. missed something. I was, I was like, like do I, was am I supposed to know earlier? this guy? Yeah, yeah, I was like, am yeah. I supposed to know this guy? Yeah, because he's a rando. We're yeah. like, I've never seen this guy before. This is the killer. And I did think that this scene feels out of place with the movie. I think yeah. there's a reason for it, but yeah. it's like we haven't dealt with any of the victims before except for maybe Carol, yeah. right? Because the first prostitute is like, you know, nameless right. uh, killer victim. Mm-hmm. And then Carol... And then this woman who were like, who the hell is this? Yeah. But the the catch of it is she actually stabs him to death Mm -hmm. (laughs) and kills the 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 killer. Like and it feels like, okay, is this the end of the are we wrapping this up? The killer's dead. You're on vacation in Spain and uh and Jean is dead. Mm -hmm. Uh, Seems like everything worked out. (laughs) Everything's yeah, like okay. Movie over. But then she gets mm-hmm. another bouquet of flowers another 20 minutes. from Jean. Mm-hmm. Signed by Jean. This yeah. Time. And mm-hmm. it's like, okay, so who's fucking with her at this right, point? Is somebody else sending him as Jean? I thought her husband was like, had fulfilled the role. I mean, and, you know, kind of. But yeah. Yeah. I thought he was sending him and then he had tracked them down and he was going to get his revenge. And then it turns out. So, so she goes home and she hears the dripping and she starts to go mad. She starts mm-hmm. to lose her mind. She sees uh, visions in the house, I guess, and all this stuff. Blood and on the then, floor, which uh, is rust water. And yeah, she's mm-hmm. going nuts. And then she is attacked by a black gloved killer. And who is it? John. And we're like, how? Because he yeah, faked his own this, death. How does this make? Yeah. I, I well, it makes so sense confused. because. How long was he in that tub? Yeah. How, what we learn at the ending was like, oh, okay, this is a staged thing, yeah, right? right. Uh, so he is not dead and he attacks her here and then he knocks her out mm-hmm. and then stages a suicide. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Which was kind of brilliant. The most brilliant use of an ice cube (laughs) in the history of film. (laughs) Because they they do a lot of, um, there's a lot of parts in this where you're just like, they start doing stuff. And you're just like, what what is happening? What is going on? No context for No context for things. He's just like taping windows shut and taking ice out of the freezer. Like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah, it's just like, what combination is this going to make up? I'm just like, ah. But he ends up... um, Pulling uh, the gas line. Pulling the gas lines. She's um, uh, Julie. Yep. Yeah. Julie is down in the kitchen. He pulls the gas line. He tapes up any cracks in the window yep. so the gas can't get out. And he's he gets an ice cube and as he's leaving the one little kitchen door, he shoves it into the locking mechanism so that he can it, get out, but when it melts, whoosh, it locks. locks. Brilliant. Genius. <laughs> Ernesto. Erne- this is yes. Ernesto. Yeah. Brilliant. And, and ironically, this when I was thinking back in this movie, like this is the scene I remembered. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, I remember this scene and I remember the ending, and that was kind of why I was like, "Well, we got to do this because right. like is this these series of revelations at the end." So because the surprise is she's dead. It's like what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Julie yeah. Ward it's is like, dead. She dies. She's like, and and uh, they did all they could. Like, what? Yeah. Yeah, because they summon the doctor who arrives and then George shows up with the doctor. Right. He tries to revive her. George goes to call for help. Yep. But it's too late. She's dead. Mm. And And the diplomat is called to Spain by the sergeant or whoever. The commissioner. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think they call him the commissioner. I think they do, yes. Yeah. Very old man with a mustache. He did all he he could. She didn't make it. Yep. Mm. 
So then. And then there's finger pointing and mm-hmm. all that stuff. And but then we see Jean out in the desert, right? Yeah. And, car approaching. And we're like, oh, man, Jean's going to get caught or something. He's yeah. meeting Jean's somebody. What's someone. happening? And who's he m- waiting for? George. George. <laughs> George. I was going to say George as well. Yeah, George. I think George. He, his real name is Jorge uh, Hilton. Don't care. Uh, George. Okay. George. So, um, <laughs> anyway, it's like, oh, these two guys know each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? It's like, oh, damn. Yeah. And so this is like strangers Did on a train. Did anyone else or really want them to be secretly lovers? Yes, I thought that's what okay. was going to happen. Especially when they started laughing. Yeah, I was like, oh, this I is I really to wanted a... them to be lovers. Yeah, yeah I but thought that what... was going to happen a couple times yeah. at the end of this movie. Yeah. We'll get to the joyride later. But... Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah so that's, that's what I was thinking. Let me ask you this. Okay, so we, and specifically now, George mm-hmm. and, um, and Sean. John, what are we saying is the motives for what they're doing? This is doing a great here? question, Colin. I also have this question because okay. I have no fucking idea. I get it on the next reveal, but right. for this one, it was like, okay, so the way I understand it, George knows that Jean and, you know, like this is her former lover. Yeah. And they got together uh-huh. to kill her, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, so there's a, a, a sex maniac running around. Right. And so. I'm going to, so this is your perfect this opportunity. This is the perfect time to kill her. Blame it on him. So it's like right. he hired, George hired Jean yeah. to stage her suicide. Why does Jean want to kill her? Right. Revenge. For leaving him. Yeah. Okay. If no, okay. if I can't Hazes have you, no one, well, no one can. Yeah. So it's gotcha. like, okay. and I'm getting paid to kill but her. But at this point, what is George's... Motive. Right. This is not revealed, even though no. I think Jean says something about, well, you had the motive. And we're but we like, don't know what that is. Yeah, we don't know what that is. I mean, it does come clear, but did Jean know it? At that time, right. He must have, because he's like, I know what your motive is, but we still don't, you know? Right. So maybe he knew the whole plan. Maybe. I don't know if he knew about the involvement of the third party, which is the husband. But I feel so, like, like all would, three of these guys. I feel like <laughs> he, he would have had to have known the entire motive and that he was involved because it only makes sense once that, once that guy's brought into the picture. Right. Right. Yeah. Because the husband wants to kill Julie and yeah, because it's like George wants to to kill Claire. So then he's the heir to the fortune. Yeah. Yeah. So they're working. Carol, 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 sorry, Claire, Carol, whatever. So they're working together, but I feel like Sean would have had to have known that. Because, Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, because well, he did because Jean, I think, was hired. He killed Carol and Julie, and his alibi was provided by the other two guys. Yeah, right. But at least he knew George was in on it. He may not have known that the husband was also part of it because I mean, what? Because he thinks that like George just wants this to happen, right? Because George is romancing. Uh, right, but why? But why would why, George but want if he Julie? Didn't know, why would he? George, why would he? Why would George want Julie dead? Why would George want Julie right. dead? If he That's knows, why right. it doesn't make sense if unless he, he knows know the other guys. He was just the hired guy, right? The other two knew. Yeah. They all three knew that they, they had were to all have all on. known. But yeah. they had to because the husband he knows knows because yeah. when he went in and found uh, uh, um, Jean's dead body, oh. he knew he wasn't dead. Right. That was that whole so, thing. So they all knew. Yeah, so all three of these guys are trying to kill Mrs. Ward. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And then, of course, uh, George kills uh, Jean, shoots him dead. He's dead for real this time. Should know better. And then... Never uh, met anybody out in the desert. He, George and uh, and the the husband... Never get on a boat with somebody. Never meet anybody out in the desert. No. Yeah, well, he was meeting him out in the desert to get paid, right? Wasn't that basically the thing? Yeah, get paid. Uh It's like, you're getting paid, (laughs) and (laughs) your documents have all been forged, and you're all good to go. Nobody knows you were a part of this. Oh, yeah, because he does get a new identity at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Something McDonald's. So then, then it's revealed that George and the husband... Are in on it, yeah. and then it's like, okay, that's where you get the the strangers on a train. Mm-hmm. We're swapping murders mm-hmm. somehow, basically, yeah. Right? I'm taking you're taking care of your cousin. That makes you the heir, yeah. and so now suddenly you're rich. That's George, and uh, the diplomat gets rid of his cheating wife. Yes, mm-hmm. uh, and so that's basically what they. And then they go on this joyride where they're. The, they're just laughing and, and out of swerving. nowhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> that's why I thought they were going to look but, at each other and be like, now we can finally be together. Right. right. That's that, what I was like, it's going to happen. That was a big feeling I got. Yeah. yeah. Plus, the way, the way that they're rocking back and forth, it doesn't go with the swaying, so no. it looks like he's just doing it because he's having fun. Yeah. It's a real... Why are they? Why are they swerving all over the road? I don't understand. Because they're having fun. That's it. They got away with it. The equivalent of walking down the road, uh, arm in arm, kicking back. But it's weird, and it goes on forever. And they're just having fun swerving back and forth. I don't understand. I'm not on board with this one. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's interrupted because they pass a woman on the road, and he's like, (gasps) "That was Julie." And you're like, "What?" And he's like, "Back up." So we're getting that kind of the way they shoot it is like you don't actually. See her. She's the only woman on this massive stretch of road. Yeah, but she yeah. passes like in the. I yeah, did like so you're the like, line, is yeah. that her? I did like the line, though. He was like, dead women usually don't hitchhike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they usually don't have a need for hitchhiking, yeah. I think is what he said. Yeah, so they that back up to go see, was it her? And sure enough, she turns around. You're like, is this a ghost? Is that what we have mm-hmm. going on here? Because, I mean, I think they were playing with that earlier. Like, is it Jean's gl- ghost? Right, right. You know? But it's like, is this her? Like, really her? Like, what the fuck? But there she is. And then behind her, like, the entire, you know, like, uh, police Fleet force police, yeah. shows up. And in a, a hurry to escape, they end up going over a cliff together and into the river. They didn't yep. explode. They didn't explode. But they drown. No. They drown. Yeah. And then, because then you're like, well, now I've got questions. How, who knew what, at what yeah. point in order right. to... You know, fake her death in order to catch these guys. And the only explanation that we're given from the police inspector is that, thank God our criminologist determined that there was something different about Carol's murder (laughs) that didn't fit the sex maniac crimes. No. You know, and that made us, you know. I'm sorry. This was the only way to get them to admit it. Yeah, it was to use you as bait, basically, so we could spring this trap. The doctor, I mean, he saved her, obviously. He saved Julie. Um but maybe when she, he did save her, she told them everything, and they're like, all right, shh, you're dead, and we'll use you as bait. But she yeah. didn't know who was after her. She's crazy at that point. She's like, Jean attacked her, even though he's dead. That's all she knows. Yeah. True. She was attacked by a ghost, yeah, as far as she's huh. concerned. So the police- And they're trying all... to make her look crazy throughout right. the movie. Yep. So the police actually did solve this and sprung a trap, improbable as it seems- and then the two guys went off the the, the ravine and died. And, boom. and then we're like, well, she's going to be fine because now there's... There's a sexy doctor. The yeah. doctor. There is a sexy doctor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who didn't want to be, uh, uh, you know, targeted as a doctor earlier on. He's like, no, no, that's... It'd be too sexy. Don't yeah. tell can't her be this good looking <laughs> and a doctor. Don't tell her I'm a Let's doctor. Let's not tell her I'm a doctor. <laughs> we'll have a whole new set of problems. Yeah, she'll a, faint. B- again. A bigger rhombus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So she she got out of it. Uh, she's found a new guy, and uh, hopefully that'll go well. I mean, we're hopefully. assuming it's not going to because mm. we know she's got a strange. But he can like stitch her up after they right. Like, the cut doctor might be actually <laughs> yeah. perfect. Yeah. Thing. Doc, doc, yeah. doc just made it up. Pentagon. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> The the Pentagon. Yeah. Love Pentagon uh, is Mrs. Is there Ward. A sex one? A sex a sextagon. A sextagon. Yeah, that's yeah. A six. A six. Yeah. Okay. Right. So we gotta add yeah. another one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, that is, that is basically the movie and thank you for sticking with us. But yes, the big indeed. question is that's right, this many Jalos into the Jalo series. Is this it? Do you want to hear any more? Do they want to hear any more? We're gonna go around the big table questions. and uh, <laughs> they're gonna tell you what they thought of tonight's movie. But first, we're going to <laughs> we're going to answer some of your mail, and in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman, Igor. Bring us the mail, masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why? Thank you, Igor. You got nothing. No. Mm-mm. Not it's strange vice. He was wearing just, black gloves. Just thank you, Igor, for okay. all that you do. And not. I don't want to. You're really all. into the ass kissing today, aren't you, over there? I, well, yeah, I was going to you know? say, like, just don't bring us into your strange I vices. Just really, I was like, I really don't want to know what his vices are. No. <laughs> that's, some, that's a door I don't need opened. That's probably wise. Yeah. All right. Well, we should let the good folks at home know how they can participate on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. 
or Twitter at Sat Freak Show. They can email us directly Saturday Freak Show Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show about tonight's movie, The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward. Novato Judoka writes in and says, High five, Colin. This was great. I could tell because as soon as we got to the multiple lengthy love scenes, I just wanted it to hurry up and get back to the story. Some of the lines <laughs> of dialogue are fantastically cheesy. The main actress is now in my Bible of Mommies. Also, oh. Bible of Mommies. Uh, uh, is, uh, we're back to Binder for I, a yeah, well, yeah. I got we, really, I got really weirded out for a second, and then I remember the Daddy Bible. I was going to yeah, say, yeah, yeah, like, you don't forget this. Yeah. I was well, like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm the weird one. I'm the weird one that right, started yes. this. Got yeah, it. Yeah. We're, we're fine. Yeah. Everything's we have fine. To go, we got to go back to the other. Was that the last? Was that? What that was done? Orphan. Oh, that was Orphan. Yeah, right, right, right. Daddy right. Bible right. Orphan. And, it gets, and then Orphan First Kill, we talk about it some more. So. And yeah. uh, Novato Judoka also has, uh, also, Twas I that left the knife is his penis comment uh, for yes. uh, What Have You Done penis, So Long? Yeah. Because anytime you can, you must. Did we emphasize that the the Jesus of the Daddy Bible is Pedro Pascal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's like, he is. Yeah. He's the it Jesus. Starts and ends yeah. right there. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, uh, Jeff Miller wrote in and he said, I love most of this movie. Spoiler alert, but the ending seemed too complicated. Twists upon twists with a long explanation. At least all the reckless driving finally paid off at the end. Laugh out loud. <laughs> Felt like now a screen movie. Now I'm going to have to watch your vice is a locked room and only I have the key since it was basically written on the second note given to Julie. Keep freaking. Yes. Oh the erratic driving paid off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All through the movie. It's like, oh my God. God. Anytime we watch a movie in Europe where there's driving, I am reminded that I never want to drive in Europe ever. Like, I'm always just like, oh God, I can't there take There are no the rules. Zigzag. Take the stairs yeah. if you want. Yeah. Uh, James May says, as mysteries go, this is better than your average, average giallo. On a personal note, the movie has a way of both being sexy while making you feel really uncomfortable mm. for finding it sexy. Yes. I'm not sure if that was Sergio Martino's goal. My guess was was he just said let's rip Edwige's clothes off in the rain while she gets smacked around in slow motion and didn't give the broader implications any other thought perhaps I'm misunderstanding Martino but then again I've seen Torso so I doubt it yeah I think you're about right yeah it's just like it's uh, this is, uh, this is fucking yep. art yep <laughs> light that rain rip that sweater <laughs> Uh, cinema or Grindhouse Cinema Database writes in and says, this is one of my favorite jallos, and I would recommend The Case of the Scorpion's Tail, also by Sergio Martino, and I, I hope you title. enjoy it. There better be a scorpion in that movie. Um, and Mark Harrison says, have you ever met someone with the surname Ward? No, me either. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> it was Warded. originally Ward, but some actual woman known as Mrs. Ward made them change the title. Interesting. Because she thought you must, it, was, it can't be Mrs. Ward. You have to change it to Mrs. Ward. Ward. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That makes all the difference. Because, okay. Because she's the only Mrs. Ward. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. the closest. See, one. that's why I don't believe it. But that is yeah. when you go on Wikipedia. That is why they say uh. yeah, here it was released as a blade in the dark. Huh. I mean, okay. that's a cool title. Yeah. But I don't know for this. But it's movie, also very yeah. uh, also generic. generic yeah. 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 Um, last week we watched a movie called The Ruins. Militime oh, yeah. Yeah, we did. Uh, wrote in and said it's a pretty decent movie. I remember renting it when it came out. One of the guys, I think the main actor, was in the last season of Justified as a gunslinger, and the movie reminded me a little bit of Teristas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Teristas. Yep. Teristas. Uh, Pat Hatfield says, so you're doing Nightmare Vacations. Could it be that you'll be doing Infinity Pool then? I hope so. But it's, it's, it's a possibility. I have not seen Infinity Pool Where do they go in yet. Infinity Pool? Well, that's in Italy. It's, the whole uh, thing takes place in Italy. No, it takes place in a made-up country in oh, Cronen, okay. Cronenberg. In the Cronenberg, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Cronenberg, yeah. Uh, I love Cronenberg. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so last week you asked the question: Is it Manhunter? Is oh it yeah, uh, you, you uh, missed this. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. They're oh, almost sorry. Sorry. The, 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 the freak show almost erupted and split off forever because oh, Sean, Sean made a bold, drastic. bold claim about oh. Red Dragon being well, better than Manhunter. No, 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 Travis, no, no, no. I Travis said Legler, Red Dragon was a good movie. Yeah. I didn't say it was better. Travis Legler said Red Dragon was better, and Michael Whitaker says Man Dragon, Red Hunter. <laughs> I forgot the question. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah. Man Dragon. Man Dragon. The week. So you have to stay tuned to find out which yeah. one makes it no, to the freak show train. first because yeah. it sounds like yes. we're on a fast track yes. to uh, uh thomas harris territory mm -hmm. um the week before that we watched a movie called hard target hell yeah we did 
And uh, C. Huds writes in C. and says, uh, even though my formative years were in the 80s and 90s, I don't think of myself as a get off my lawn guy. There's a few movies every year that I enjoy in lots of genres, but I mostly hate modern action films. I get that they're competing against superhero movies, but the audience can understand the difference mm-hmm. between Superman flying to the moon versus some dude driving his muscle car through the moon or some right. other such bullshit, right? right? Yeah. I, no, I, <laughs> I went saw. I went and saw Guardians of the Galaxy the night, and I saw um, like the last trailer for the fast new fast yeah. movie. Yeah. And I looked at my brother, and I was like, "Why are they superheroes? Yeah, they are. They, they catch cars in their like, hands and shit. Like, what yeah. the fuck? Nuts. There's a there's a. I was like, did, a this, car did this movie. start you a can street? do shit with yeah, cars? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> did this start a street racing? Why are they? Yeah, yeah they Why were, are they superheroes? They were stealing VCRs in that first movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, but like it. Sometimes families got to go to space. <laughs> but just, just admit it's a superhero movie then. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't pass it off as having any sense of grounding yeah. in reality because it does not. Like, there's an Instagram. I mean, everyone's going to those movies now thinking there's going to be any type of reality. Well, but there's like, like, uh, there's like a, well, are, you, are you a DC, Marvel, or Honda guy? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good way to put it. They, Holly, I've decided to, there's a montage going around Instagram reels and it's literally all the clips of like the moment they left reality in these yeah. movies. And they it's go to like, space. Yeah, they go. It, <laughs> Ludacris and what's his nuts go, go to space. space. Yeah, yeah, I know. yeah it's... <laughs> It's fu- I'll have to send it to you. It's fucking <laughs> Vin Diesel getting thrown through buildings and standing up like right? nothing happened. Like it's literally fine. breaking through concrete yeah. walls like Superman. It's fucking stupid. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and I think Hobbs and Shaw was uh, that was the spin-off. dumbest. But movie. isn't Idris Elba like an actual? Isn't, doesn't he declare I'm Superman? Yeah. And, and yes. I'm black yeah, Superman. I'm black Superman. Superman. He does. Yeah, yeah. He does. God, that movie In was his, stupid. Uh, <laughs> it was the armor that was like bioengineered that yeah. whatever something. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, about Sorry. hard target. Yeah, hard target. Yeah. Uh, action dude, right? Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, as he should. As he should. Yeah. He says, uh, at least Jean Claude Van Damme is not completely void of displaying emotions like that no talent moron Steven Seagal. Yes, yeah, under siege yes. movies are entertaining, but wholly in spite of Seagal, not because of his uh, acting. Yes. And it would be marvelous to see Jean Claude Van Damme, Seagal, Chuck Norris, and Hulk Hogan all try to play a high stakes game of charades <laughs> against one another. <laughs> In which the winner gets a chance to put his pinky finger on an Oscar statue for 10 seconds. And he says, any longer than that, the world may physically collapse on itself faster than a rotted Halloween pumpkin. Oh, my God. Wow. You have a lot of words, action, dude. That, that was poetry. That's the next Expendables movie. That's the one I want to see. That was fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> well, wow. you just know if, if JCVD's in trades, he's going to do the splits for everything. Right. So that's going to be real difficult. What was the lineup that he, he came up with? Uh, JCVD, right. Seagal, Norris, and Hogan. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, the Hogan worst, I'm guessing worst. the worst the worst actors. Yeah, the worst actors. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's fantastic. Yep. Uh, Furious Cinema points out something that we missed about Hard Target, mm. that uh, writer mm. Chuck Farrar is the first guy in the movie to get tracked down by the Hunters, a.k.a. Natalie's dad. Oh, no. Yes, oh. I'm sorry. I forgot to mention that. Okay. That was in my notes, and I forgot to bring it up. Good to know. There you go. And Order mm. of the Gash says, I will watch anything with JCVD. He's my favorite. And I stand by the fact that blood sport is a masterpiece. I, I enjoyed that. <laughs> we have done blood sport yeah, on this. Yep, we yes, did, we did but none of us recommended it. I, I think I Michaela did. Michaela did. Yeah, I'm uh, sure I did. Have. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dem Twisted Animation either. says Hard Target is not only my favorite Jean Claude Van Damme mm. movie mm. next to Universal Soldier, Hands down. but it's also one of my favorite movies of all time and most likely in my top 20. I kind of wish there was a romance between Chance. And Natasha, that's her name, not Natalie. <laughs> sure, sure. But that's because I'm a sucker from some romance in any film genre, and I know I'm probably in the minority when it comes to wanting romance in an over-the-top action movie like this. But regardless, the movie's incredible, as well as Jean-Claude Van Damme's mullet. Mm-hmm. Yes, no, I, we talk all the time about how we want human emotions and relationships back in movies, and that includes romance. Like, yeah. we talked about the, um, how you weren't here about in The Ruins, there was, like, a lot of nudity that was not sexual in that. But, oh, like, yeah. I, but yet there was flirty sex sex scenes too it was huh. very st- That's we good were, we were all like shocked by what like, we were seeing because <gasps> adult movies yeah, yeah. it felt what? like we were watching something lewd yeah. when we weren't <laughs> I, I, yeah. yeah i feel like with hard target like i was fine there's no romance just because like all i want is action in that movie right that's all yeah. i want you got it you know well um kryptonian orphan uh talks about uh lance hendrickson who's mm-hmm. in hard target and says Brilliant. he has two ranges that he rocks like no other disarmingly charming like an aliens or threateningly intimidating 
intimidating, yep. like in Hard Target. Sometimes both ranges within the same movie, which yes. is Pumpkinhead. And he says, and the dude works. If you have a movie, he'll do it. Oh, yes. yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at Even Hellraiser. still. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Check I, out our Hellraiser. What's that? Hellra- Hellraiser Dead Dead I, lands, no, dead Inferno. light, dead no, Inferno. No, no, Hell World. Hell World. Hell World. Thank you very much. I right. forgot he the was video game. not video game. Yeah, the not video. Yes, I forgot video he video was game. in Scream Three. Yep. Yeah. 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 I told. I watched Scream Three yesterday. Jennifer's body. Why did you watch Scream Three yesterday. I don't know. I just did. Okay, that's fine. I mean, I have no complaints. <laughs> I was like, yeah. oh yeah, I forgot he was in this. He pops up and everything. Um, Richard Crotzer agrees with us that seeing uh, Wilfred Brimley riding away from an exploding yep. uh, still on a horse <laughs> with a bow and arrow might be one of the greatest scenes in movie history. It really yep. is. Agreed. Uh, we Steve, should get a poster made of that. I know yeah. that was really great. Cool. Like yeah. I had forgotten all about that and seen it's it last beautiful. or whatever two weeks ago it was the greatest thing ever. Uh, Steve Carney says, "How have I never seen this movie before?" It kind of <laughs> sounds like fun. And Nuno Santos says, "Hard Target is the most awesome action masterpiece of all time." Damn, it's up there. It's up there. It's up there. Damn. So there you go. Well, thank Close you, uh, all of you, each of you, for writing in. We really appreciate yeah, it. We really seriously. do. Now, uh, back to the strange vice and Mrs. Ward. We're going to get this over with. We're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of the movie, starting with me. <laughs> I go tonight. Um, I'm going to I'm going to recommend uh, recommend the movie, although for a lot of this movie, I was just like, I'm not recommending this movie as I was watching it. because I'm just like we tend to in these movies, they tend to just uh, for me, I feel like they go on too long. And they this go was on, an hour and 40 minutes. Yeah, and they go on there. too long in moments where you can really shorten it up. Because they wander through that house with the lighter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That could have been cut down a lot. There was a couple other scenes where it's just her. Like, while we appreciated the ice cube, it didn't need to be that long. Yeah. Right. Or when she's walking around an apartment, there's a lot of that. Yeah, where there's just yeah, stuff yeah. going on. It's just like, I think we could pick up the pace yeah. a little bit. Yeah, um, but some of that's based on post-MTV type editing. You know, it's like, do you give an allowance to a movie that came out before? Or, I mean, I guess Psycho doesn't have that problem. No. Psycho is a movie from the 60s that feels yeah. like a contemporary edit. Well, yeah. that's not true, but I mean, you look it at the moves, Gus Van yeah. Zandt but one, yeah, you know, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but there are it, movies from that time that move at a fine pace for me. Yeah, but uh, based on like everything that happened uh, at, uh, near the end of this movie, I, I kind of like the the switcheroos and, and kind of the tricks they play on us. Um, yeah, at least they weren't stabbing people in the vagina. That's a plus for this movie. Yeah, Colin. definitely Good job. a plus. That's, I'm glad this wasn't that wasn't the last one in this. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's uh, uh, I like the characters. Um, I like the actors in this. Sometimes it's movies like this are a little hard because like the what do we watch? What was the last one? Solange. Yeah. Some mm-hmm. of the characters that you know they put in these movies, you don't like the three men in this movie. You know, you don't really know. I don't know. They don't really come off as characters sometimes. I don't know. Um. Yeah, this was a hard one for me. I was, I was this close to being like, nah. But then we got to the end. I was just like, okay, that's fine. I like. I can deal with that. So I'll recommend it. It's uh, it's better than some I've watched. Um, they're just they tend to be overly long. Is my only mm-hmm. problem with these things. We cut out like fifteen minutes of this. Uh, you know, I'm good. Um, but I will recommend now that I know the strange ward of this, the strange or the strange vice of Mrs. Ward. <laughs> She's a strange ward. Yeah. She's a strange yeah. ward. <laughs> But uh, yes, I'm gonna recommend it. Uh, Holly, since you're back, I'm back. Uh, you're gonna have to wait, Michaela. <laughs> ah, what did you think of <laughs> Mrs. Ward's very strange vice? You know, I I agree with you, Sean. That like sometimes the pacing just isn't quite there. And I but I do remember I had that same issue with Torso because mm. there was parts of Torso I was really engaged with, and there was other parts where I was like, let's get back to the engaging stuff. And I think that. No, I gotta choose my words carefully here. I don't want to piss off any writers, but I was like, <laughs> I think that there's a problem choice, in the pacing, choice. in the writing, possibly. Mm-hmm. But um, and who who wrote <laughs> the the amazing escape of me? Stalled. Say it out loud. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, but I there is always something in like the second or third act that hooks me back in and makes me recommend it. In Torso, it was the lock scene with the key, right, and mm-hmm. the key falling through yeah. the door, and sensing a theme here Ernesto Gastaldi always has these key moments in the third act with a lock because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. he did in this one too with yeah. the ice cube and the lock Pun yeah, yeah. yeah and uh <laughs> and uh but so he titled a whole movie about right, it right <laughs> yeah yeah and so I like that that's a theme of his and he's finding a really creative way to use it because that's definitely going to be the thing I think I take away from this movie is the ice and the, and the lock mm-hmm. and, and and 
Hello Indigestion. Those are going to yeah, be like the some, two things I remember. The, but like there's the, some good stuff in here. Right. The, but and like the fashion and the set design and like just everything of the time period is really fun to look at. It's a nice time capsule movie. So I'm going to recommend it. But I mean, if you've listened to any of our Giallo episodes, I feel like we have a lot of the same criticisms over and over again. So you know what to so. expect at this point. So, but yeah, I definitely liked it a lot better than what have you done to Solange? Like a lot better. So I'm going to recommend it. Holly, what do you think? Yeah, I, Sean, I had a similar uh, thought where the whole time we're watching, I was like, I'm not going to recommend this shit. <laughs> but like there were, but then there were moments where I was like, maybe, I don't know. And then I, I think just talking about it, I think we had a lot of fun talking about it tonight. Yes. So that always kind of makes me feel a little confused about whether I want to recommend it or not. I'm like, I can't recommend something just because I had a fun time talking about it with you guys. Like, that's right. not really fair. Well, the discussion makes me yeah. realize the good things that were in the movie. Yeah, but Whether like my... we have a good time talking yeah, about it. Yeah, but then like, it was like, like, well, no, it's about my experience watching yeah. it. You know, not everyone's going to sit around and talk about it with their friends afterwards. Very true. So, yeah, it's hard for me because I was like, I agree with what Michaela was saying. The pacing is off and there is there is a problem with the writing with this movie because it is very confusing. This is a very confusing movie. There's a lot that I was like, should I know who that guy is or what's going on there? Yeah, what's the their problem. motive? When like guys show up. You're just like, I should yeah. know who that is. Yeah. Like there's, I was confused for a lot of this movie. Um, there were moments where I, I know I didn't declare it and you guys don't say that doesn't yeah, count. You didn't say it out loud. I have said it out loud, but it, there was a moment where I was like, I bet they're all in on it. And <laughs> <laughs> very convenient to say. <laughs> I, <laughs> It's true. I was like, hey, you know. I, on the other hand, did the opposite thing where I just called out each one individually at a yeah, certain yeah, point. Yeah. Like, it's he's it. It's him. No, he's it's him. It. It's him. <laughs> no, I was like, just the way this is going, the fact, like, especially when Sean came back, I'm like, yeah, I think they're all in on it. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. I feel like it just didn't do it for me. There is some, there's some weird shit. Obviously, she has weird vice that this movie's based right. around. So there's some weird shit that's, you know, hasn't really, I haven't seen before. Um, but I, I don't know if I can recommend it. I, I didn't care for the movie while watching it. So I think that's what I have to go on. That was my experience. I like talking about it. There's some interesting things to discuss. But my experience says, no, I won't recommend it. Colin, sure. bring us home. I think on uh, one of the past Jalo episodes, I was asked to rank uh, favorite Jalos. I want to say that I did put this one on the list. Uh, I don't remember. I think I said maybe either that or I switched it out at the last minute with the bird of crystal plumage God just because. Damn it. That it was... <laughs> we almost went the whole show. I know. I was waiting for it. <laughs> uh, because of its significance and basically kicking off the, the, jo- the and genre. And its significance in this podcast history. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Um, we're not watching the bird. I'm, I'm not going to bring it because I, I don't think there's anything to well, the talk about. Well, the bit has to be over if you bring yeah, it. We can't I know. Yeah, I think yeah. we kill you if yeah. we bring that movie. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't the think there's is. enough there that we haven't away. already talked about. Yeah, are I think you a phoenix that if you bring that movie, you just like yeah. Yeah, it's, dissolve? Uh, yeah, and then you will rise yeah. from the ashes yeah. of it. That's why he's not bringing it. He's yeah. like, you guys yeah. can't see that transformation. And I really, to be honest with you. Of course, like, sir, it's been 10 years since your last Sir, it's been so long. Yes, please, please. Well, they never say time. never then. I mean, it's like, some I'll point, be fine. And this arm goes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At some point, then maybe it'll make up. But I don't think that there's anything to, to say in that, you know, discussion about that movie that we yeah. haven't covered already. And that's kind of the thing. It feels like this is, uh, you know, just to, to experience the the Edwige uh, Fennec, mm. uh, George Hilton, Jallo power couple, uh, you know, dynamic. Um the thing that I, I guess, I, this is why I like this movie so much. I have, uh, you know, you, and and I guess, um, you know, as far as the writing goes, I actually think this is one of the the better written Jalos because I'm like, <laughs> oh, like everything checks out and kind of makes sense, and they like explain everything, and there's no like plot holes. That's where not true. Colin. Other other Jalo movies, you're just sitting there going like, uh, okay, and then this happened. I didn't get that impression. I here. did. Yeah, but it felt like they explained it later. There, I guess there's a. No, we had to sort it out around the. Yeah, table. but it, that, but it's there. I guess that's what I'm saying. It's like Is the, it? the writer has baked it in, and you can when you go back I mean, and examine what you got. No. It's like okay, well, so it was there. It played fair. Where a lot of them, it's like okay, and it's this guy or you know whatever. Um, like at the end of when he done Solage, where it was like, and then. It's him, you know. Right. I didn't get that feeling here 
the same way. It was like, you look back and it's like, oh, okay, that's how this all stacked up. And this is why all uh, suddenly it all clicks into place. These are what the motives were for what everybody was doing the whole way through the movie. Um, yeah, it, uh, so I guess that's the way it, it kind of strikes me as like one of the better mystery giallos. It's not really a slasher movie. It's a mystery. As a mystery, I thought it was actually like pretty good and engaging. Yeah, and it was like I wasn't I wasn't expecting that ending, having all three of them kind of do the whole thing and be in on it. So got me there. Yeah, and I think uh yeah, it does share that with uh torso and you know whether that's uh you know what? There seems to be like in Weege Fennec character seems to have uh like she's always like you know she used to be in orgies right and there's this one guy from the orgy that still keeps following her. i think that's case of or a curse of uh or the uh, the curse of the bloody, bloody iris. iris um or case of the bloody iris i think she was like involved in orgies with ivan rasimov in uh all the colors of the dark and that's like uh-huh. uh you know like hey, he's still around this guy i used to be in these orgies with um she's in strip nude for your killer you know which is a pretty good title for a shallow movie um but uh yeah i think he uh, i think uh, uh, uh i think it is ernesto gastaldi that has these like the third acts actually do kind of like work you back up into the movie there's like a mystery and then there's like once they start you know um because torso i remember it was like the first half of it was like okay it's okay and then the second you know half was where it actually like came kind of uh, alive uh same with this one with his scripts um yeah i don't know i i, I think torso would probably be like the more fun watch Mm -hmm. fun you know it's like (laughs) more entertaining uh this is like for mystery aficionados if you like mystery movies i think this is a pretty good italian uh mystery and i guess that is what (laughs) the giallo uh actually means you know i mean that's what it is argento went and did his own you know he put flair on him um but this is basically like okay this is a uh, this is the Jalo. Okay, I don't know. All right, so I think <laughs> I think I'm done with that. So, because uh, where do you go from there? Yeah, from here, you'd have to go to Lucio Fulci. We ask the same question, yeah. Colin. <laughs> Lucio Fulci and you movies always have an answer, and that would be like, uh, "Don't torture a duckling," or "The Lizard in a Woman's Skin," or "Oh, I haven't uh, heard that one." Uh, New York Ripper, uh, which yeah. Sean warns me against. No, one, I'm just, no one's gonna like it here. No I one's know, gonna like just it here. Gonna, yeah piss and turn people off uh, yeah it's very uh uh seedy and unseemly and yes. very distasteful don't do it colin yep so uh <laughs> this might be sticking a fork in uh at least the italian oh no oh, man. Jello. Okay. <laughs> but i recommend the strange voice of mrs ward next week we're gonna watch a movie that's chosen by sean uh, what are we watching next week <sighs> you guys feel that what feel what summer I do feel summer. You feel summer? What does summer mean, John? You know what summers are good for? Blockbusters. Oh. Sequels. Sequels. Oh, 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 shit. Summer sequels. Bringing a sequel. And we're going to the woods. (gasps) Have we done the first movie? I like this. No. Okay. Who's diving into the sequel? We'll talk about the the first movie. We'll talk about the first movie. Okay. But we'll be watching Book of Shadows. Blair Witch 2. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have never boy. seen this. Ah, oh, you will learn the secrets of Esfriver. <laughs> uh, well, you won't, that. actually, but yeah. Well, was, was I'm going to no, okay. find a way for us all to learn the secrets of Esfriver. <laughs> okay. I will bring it. All right. Well, it's that's uh, Book of Shadows. It's not Blair Witch 2, Book of Shadows. No, it's, it's Book, Book of Shadows, Blair, Blair Witch 2. 2. Ooh, uh, you can compare it to Blair Witch. Oh, there's a whole. We're getting into. We're going all yeah, Blair Witch yeah, yeah, yeah. on this the next be, this episode. Is the Blair Witch episode. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, we have thoughts on the whole thing? Bring them. Yeah. Yep. The video game series sequels and stuff. Like, oh yeah. Next week on right. Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>